in this video we're gonna take a look at how we can kill our enemy how we can display a dead animation and how we can also loot coin when our enemy dies this week i'm gonna release two videos about this 2d rpg and then i'm gonna release two videos for my 3d rpg because i'm making uh, those two series at the same time i think today and wednesday gonna be like 2d rpg and this weekend it's gonna be about the 3d rpg so without further ado let's get started so if we want to kill our enemy, we need to have a way to detect the, the sword of our player. So for that, we need to go back on our enemy scene. So I can just click here and I go back to my enemy scene right there. And uh, by clicking on the main node enemy, I'm going to click on plus and I'm going to add an area 2D. And that area 2D, I'm going to name it it box like this. And it's going to have a collision shape like that. And I'm just going to extend a little bit the collision shape. So I'm going to click on collision shape here. I'm going to go to shape, empty. I'm going to put a new circle shape right here, this one. And then I'm just going to extend a bit the size of it, just like this, something like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to change the debug color. So like this, I can uh, see clearly what uh, what is this. Uh, at first, at a glance. And so now that I have that hitbox, uh, I need to go back to my uh, main level. I need to go back on my player here and I need to take a look at the sword collision layer of my sword. So here my sword, you can see, is on collision 2 and it can collide with the mask 3. So here we, on our enemy hitbox right there, we need to go to our collision here and I need to put that that on layer 3 and it can collide with mask 2 which is the sword of our uh, player so now that I have done that what I can do is I can go to node right here still with my hitbox selected right there I can go to node just next to the inspector node and here I can go to area entered and I can click on connect and I can connect that on my enemy underscore one because that's the node that I have the script and so here I can click on connect and it creates that uh, that uh, it box area enter and here what we can do is we can remove uh, elf of our uh, enemy but I don't think I don't remember I've uh, created elf oh I did actually uh, we have created elf already so that's good so now what I can do is I can just go back to my enemy and here I can say I can make an if statement so what I want to do is like I want to specify what type of area has entered so if I go back to my main level if I go back to my sword here you can see there's that sort of little cube here and this means that it is in a group that is called sword if I click on it I go to group I have that group sword here that is uh, uh, apply on my sword equation shape so what I can do is on my enemy I can do if area dot is underscore in underscore group and here between quote i can type exactly the, with the same spelling the group of my uh, the, the group i want to reach so here is my sword what i can do here is i can do f minus equal one and i can print my elf actually so print elf like this so now we should be able to um, uh, detect the uh, swell of our player so let's take a look i'm gonna come here i'm gonna attack you can see up one now minus one up minus four etc etc so that's good that works so now we need to do something uh when we are reaching zero so for that we're gonna go back into our enemy movement and here i'm gonna uh, create in my in, uh, in my enemy state enumerator i'm gonna create a new state that new state i'm gonna call it dead in all cap like this and in my uh, match current state, but that's, that's the, the state machine of my enemy. Uh, if you want, if you don't have that, watch the video where we have created our enemy because that's what we have done there. And so here, what I can do is I can just do enemy dot state, enemy underscore state dot dead, and here I can uh, link that to a function that doesn't exist uh, yet. That is called dead. We're gonna create that function. So I'm gonna go at the bottom here, and I'm gonna create funk dead and here for now what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna q3 my uh, enemy when uh, it reach uh, zero but how do we um how do we connect that how do we uh, make sure that when our enemy is reaching zero we are deleting uh, our enemy so what we can do 
is we can go to our physics process and here we can just make a simple if statement right there. And so what I can do is I can just say if elf is uh, smaller or equal to zero, then I want to change the enemy, uh, the, the current state, current state, and I want to change it to enemy state dot dead like this. And so with that done, now we are good. So for example, I can launch the game. I can come back here. One, two, uh, three. Voila. And now my enemy is dead. Perfect. So now we need to have a way to first uh, give a feedback uh, of our enemy uh, dying. And so what I want to do is because my enemy, I I need to go back here. My enemy on this sprite sheet, if I double click on it, go here on the sprite sheet of my enemy, there's no dead animation. And it's on purpose because I want to show you another way that you can use for optimizing uh, your um, your game. So for example, maybe you don't want to have to draw every time like a, a dead animation for each uh, character in your game. So maybe you want to use the same one over and over. And so that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So here we're going to click on a new scene. We're going to click on plus and here I'm going to create a new scene to this scene right there. And that to this scene, I'm going to call it dead underscore FX. And that dead FX here, I'm going to attach to it a sprite 2D. And I'm going to re-click on my dead FX and I'm going to attach an animation player. This one. Ah, no. <laughs> animation player. Voila. So that animation player, I'm going to rename it anim. And that's going to be it. Uh, so anim. Voilà. So now what I want to do is I want here to my sprite 2D to load a specific uh, specific uh, sprite. So I have it here. It's on my uh, it's on a folder that I have. It's called FX. I don't think I have put it yet into my HIO. So I will put it in my HIO if you want to uh, to take it. So what I'm gonna do is like I'm just gonna go click on my sprite 2D. I'm gonna go in my folder dead FX and I'm just gonna drag my dead FX into my empty texture slot. And so here you can see I have one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna go to animation and on H frame, I'm gonna put five. Here I'm gonna just create that animation. So I'm gonna click here on new and I'm gonna call it active. And then I'm just gonna go back to my sprite and I'm gonna go here to frame that is at zero. I'm gonna click on the key icon, not gonna click a create reset track. I don't need it. I'm gonna click on create. And then here I'm just gonna click here I'm just going to delete the double that I've created right here, like that, so I can come here. Voila. And I can leave it at one, like this. So let's have a look. Voila. What I can do is I can put that on uh, auto play on load. So like this, it will, auto, it will play automatically on load. And now what I can do is I can just uh, save that. I can save it. I can go back to my scene folder and here I'm going to uh, create a new folder that I'm going to call effect effects like this. And I'm going to put my data fix right there like that. So now that I have done that, I can call that dead effects into my enemy. So I'm going to show you how. So uh, we need to go back into our script and uh, not the enemy one script, but our enemy movement right there. And what I want to do is I want to make a reference to that um, dead FX, uh, scene that we just created. So for that, I'm going to do at on ready var. And that on ready var, I'm going to call it dead underscore anim. And I'm going to set it equal to a preload. So this is helpful for like preloading uh, a specific scene uh, in Godot. Uh, when you want to instantiate something, you always use preload on average. And now you can see that with preload and two parentheses open, we have like a little sub menu that open and shows our um, our scene available. And so here we have scene effect data fixed TSCN. That's the one we want. So we're going to use this one. So now what I can do is I can create a new function and that new function, I'm going to uh, come here under dead and I'm going to call it dead underscore animation. And here we want to basically instantiate the, that animation to the position of our player. So what we are for enemy. So what we want to do here is we want to create a new variable inside that. That variable, I'm going to call it dead and I'm going to set it equal to dead underscore anim dot instantiate like this and so this is what you use in godot for like instantiating a, a scene now that we have done that we need to get the position so here what we're going to take is we're going to take the name of our variable here so dead 
and I'm going to say that dot global uh, global underscore position is equal to the global position of my uh, enemy. So this will make sure to get the global position of where my enemy is in the scene. So for example, if he was here, it will take the global position here. Like this, it store it. And it applies that to my dead animation scene. So now I can go back to my script. And uh, where is it? Enemy movement right here. And so now what we need to do is we just need to instantiate our um, dead animation to our enemy. But we need to not um, instantiate on the enemy because we're going to queue free the enemy. So here what we need to do is we need to instantiate it on the main level node that we have. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to do get underscore tree with two parentheses. Then we're going to go out of the parentheses. We're going to put a dot. It's going to be get underscore root. Then we're going to get out of it put a dot, and then we're going to add a child. So here we're going to add a child, this one, and between parentheses, we're going to put our dead uh, fix. So now that all of this is done, when we are uh, dying, what we can do is like here, I can just uh, call my dead animation, dead underscore animation, like this. And so now it will work. So let's have a look. I come here, I just give like this and you can see my animation has played and my enemy is deleted which is perfect so now we're going to do the same things but for making a loot we're going to loot a coin when our enemy is uh, dead so for that i'm going to go under func dead uh, animation and i'm going to create a new function and i'm going to call it loot underscore coin and uh, here i'm going to do basically the exact same thing so what i'm going to do here is first i need to create a um, uh, a reference to my coin so I need to go at the top of my script and I'm gonna just do at unready var here I'm gonna call that coin underscore loot and then here I'm gonna put equal to a preload put parenthesis and then I'm gonna look for my coin scene right there with that done now we have preloaded that and we can use it for instantiating it where our uh, enemy is dead so here, uh, what I can do is I can do var coin equal coin underscore loot dot instant shit. We do the exact same thing that we have done for the dead animation. Then here I can say uh, coin dot global global underscore position is equal to global position. So this will make sure that we are at the same place. And then we can just get underscore tree. Uh, dot get underscore root dot add underscore child and between the parentheses we put our coin and so now we can put it here if we if we want in our dead animation or we can put it also into our um, dead animation right there so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna uh, go here and I'm just gonna uh, put loot coin like this so now let's have a look. I come here, I kill my enemy, and now I have a coin that I can uh, pick up. So that's good. So that's perfect. So now we have like all the basic for like um, killing uh, killing our enemy, and we have also the basic for like adding coins. I just want to do something with my coins. I need to come back here need to come back on the scene and I'm just going to increase the collision shape because the collision shape is a bit too small. Voila, like this. So now that will be good. So now I can come here. Voila, I can select. I can pick up my coin like this and that's good. Voila, so that's cool. So now that we have done that, we have done a lot of things already into that, uh, that tutorial and we're going to continue in the next video. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a shader that is uh, going to help us to have a feedback when we are hitting our enemy. Basically, our enemy is going to be uh, all white and for like a, like a split second. And uh, our, uh, we're going to do the same for our player. Our player also going to turn like white when he gets a shock, when he gets like a, a, a collision from our enemy. So like this, we will have visual feedback. That's what we're going to do in the next uh, video. So that's it for me. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it's the case, don't hesitate to give a like and subscribe. And me, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.